fellow, my fellow dong enjoyers, my fellow doo doo devourer, my fellow <laughs> mud muir muncher. Elden Ring has been out for like a month by now, probably. I don't know where I'm gonna, <laughs> what day I'm gonna finish this goddamn video, but Elden Ring has been out for a while, let's just say that. And Elden Ring has been, of course, praised for its critically acclaimed good gameplay. I mean, I played it, it was pretty fucking good. I expect nothing more from, 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 from software. Anyway, in light of Elden Ring coming out with great success, let's talk about Sekiro, why don't we <laughs> capitalize on that fucking algorithm. But backwards. <laughs> Looking at everyone's Sekiro bosses ranking, like usually the one that takes the cake and on the top spot is Ishin Ashina, you know, Father Owl or Demon of Hatred for the masochists out there. Yunichiro usually ranks high up there but never like the very top. In a ranking with all the other Blood Soul Kiro ring bosses, Junichiro ranks even lower usually you know usually at the b or higher level but still never the top but for me man usually why usually <laughs> but for me man junichiro is my goddamn personal favorite sekiro bosses easily without a doubt now a disclaimer the only game i played in the blood souls kiro ring series is only Bloodborne, Sekiro, and Elden Ring, which all are platinum, by the way. Sekiro being my first. With that in mind, I'm not gonna have like insight to compare Junichiro to the other bosses from the Soul series, so just keep that in mind when I left out on comparison to the other Souls game, that might be obvious, you know. I also will be just mainly talking about how much I love this man and my own personal experience. This is not gonna be like a super critical analysis of each individual detail and gameplay of how Junichiro works. <laughs> None of that. My intelligence stat is far too low to make that kind of video, you know? Anyway, Junichiro Ashina. Hisashina, Mikoyo. You met Jinichiro Ashina for the first time early in the game? Well, technically you met him here in the intro of the game, but that's hardly a fight, isn't it? <laughs> the first proper fight would be on top of Ashina Castle. Now, by this point, the only boss fight the only boss fight you encounter is probably or Lady Butterfly. If you decided to explore Hirata Estate, that is. Janichiro at this point of the game is like nothing you ever encounter. Giobu prefers to use like a long arcing attack with his big ass spear and Lady Butterfly perform a very predictable 3 piece combo that can easily be exploited with a perfectly timed parry, you know? While Janichiro is fucking relentless, he is super aggressive, his combo string is fast and re really long. Overall, he just has a more diverse selection of moves than the other previous two boss encounters. The first time I encountered him, he rocked my shit, dude. I, it took me two straight days of just fucking trying and trying to beat him. And I barely survived his third phase as well. I, I escaped, I won with the skin of my teeth. But in that last run, when I finally managed to beat him, something just, you know, click. Something just snapped inside of my brain. I started to see his move coming. I started to consistently parry his overhead counter and followed it up with a mikiri on his thrust or a stomp when he did a swipe. I started to get a proper pacing as well when I healed so I can dodge his arrows properly. I was finally able to see his wombo combo coming too. <laughs> it felt so otherworldly. It felt like I was going ultra instinct on Jinichiro, like legit. And the euphoria, man. Oh my god, the euphoria. 
the euphoria that people say they get when defeating souls bosses, I finally got it. It was exhilarating. My hands legit won't stop shaking for 5 minutes after that fight. God damn, what a good ass fight, man. <laughs> My personal experience aside though, I love how Junichiro is here pretty much as a teacher to teach you all the core mechanics of Sekiro, a final task you need to fight, so to say. The first time fighting him in the flower fields feels fucking impossible, probably because it is. It's pretty much impossible to fight him and win if you play the game for the first time at that point. And the Sanka time on top of Ashina castle still feels like there's a mountain that you need to climb, but you also feel like there is a chance if you just learn his move and pay attention a little bit, you know? And the third time you fight him before the last boss, he's pretty much a joke. The majority of people are probably aware of this, but I'm gonna say it anyways because it's a fucking awesome detail. The three times you fight him is supposed to symbolize your journey of this game. As the wolf gets stronger, as you, the player, gets stronger as well. Isn't that fucking awesome though? The fact that From Software puts so much fucking thought into Junichiro, the foil of the wolf, and by extension, you as the player. God damn, I love you, From Software. Also, small little detail that I'm sure like the majority of Sekiro player base already knew because it spread like Dragon Rod on my first playthrough. The fact that you can see the wolf hesitating to even unsheath his sword and his hands kinda like stumble a bit the first time he met Junichiro and the second time he got more confident he unsheathed his sword without any hesitation but that uncertainty still lingers, he still takes it out slowly and the third time he straight up just like alright square up bitch I ain't that weak shit I'm built different now <laughs> god I love from software so much their attention to detail is just off the mark, man. Throughout the Blood Souls Kiro Ring series. <laughs> man, this is why. It just From Software has grown to be like one of my favorite developers of all time. Props to you, From Software. I can't wait for Armor Core 6, by the way. Please release Armor Core. <laughs> Story. For the people not God damn it. For the people that might not, you know, pay attention to the story that well, you may think like Junichiro is the villain, right? I mean the wolf had to fight him three times, he did steal Kuro, I mean like wrong You're wrong. <laughs> Junichiro is the antagonist, yes. He's the foil to the main protagonist that is Wolf. The main villain is actually the owl if you think about it. Junichiro's main motivation is only to save Ashina, a country that he dearly loved. Yes, he did kidnap a kid and experimented on a bunch of people via Dojun, but that's only a last resort, man, come on. <laughs> Cut my main man Junichiro some slack, alright? Okay, yes, he did kidnap Kuro. But he didn't hurt Kuro though, he didn't force Kuro to do anything. He kinda just takes Kuro places and asks Kuro nicely to let him inherit the dragon power so he can become immortal and fight to protect Ashina. And when he realized the wolf is the only anchor of hope that Kuro has, then he feels forced to fight. Contrast that to the owl who raises a kid to be a shinobi that prioritizes his father will more than his master, purposely placed said shinobi to protect the divine heir, legit burned down Hirata estate, faked his Bruh. own death so that in 3 years he can come back and ask his faithful shinobi that he manipulated from child to forsake his master. <laughs> now it's pretty much clear who the villain is, huh? Junichiro is one of those characters where he is a hero in his own story that only does bad things because they are backed into a corner, right? So here's my interpretation of what his backstory is. Nothing, nothing I'm about to fucking say is canon, mind you. It's just my own personal like theory and interpretation. Say it ahead canon, if you will.
so Junichiro was an orphan found by Ishin then proceed to be adopted by him. In Junichiro's eyes, Ashina is his whole life. I think the bond between him and Ashina is so strong that he considered Ashina to be the mother that raised him, the mother that he never has. Evident by him giving the pronoun her when he mentioned Ashina. Ashina, this land is everything to me for her sake. In his eyes, he's the only one who can save Ashina because he feel in debt. Heresy, you say? If it is for the sake of preserving Ashina, I will seize any manner of heretical strength. He feels like the only way to pay back Ashina for raising him is to save it. So he puts the burden of all of that into his own hands. For her sake, I will shed humanity itself. If you look at it this way, it kind of makes sense why he tried so hard to save Ashina. Why he keeps seeking power for himself to become stronger rather than seeking help from someone else. Instead of that, Genichiro, with the heavy burden he carries, tunnel vision and decided to get power of immortality for himself so that he himself can save Ashina. The irony being, if Genichiro got Kuro's immortality, he would spread more suffering throughout the lands of Ashina via Dragon Rod every time he dies and resurrected. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of my heroic fanfiction of Junichiro. <laughs> and pretty much at the end of this video. If you watch this whole video through the entirety of it, thank you. Or, I don't know, spend your time on something else. Why are you watching this dumbass thing? But yeah, I tried to make like a Sekiro video two years ago, but that video is sucks. Dude. That video is certified dung eater. That video is absolutely loathsome. <laughs> and I also tried to make like a comprehensive, a more comprehensive video, like talking about like the whole thing of Sekiro and why I love it, but. <laughs> In the middle of the script, I just keep writing about Genichiro and rambling about Genichiro. So I ended up making that bit, that Genichiro bit into his own video, I guess. I don't know. That comprehensive video might coming. I don't know. I might turn it into another video. Who knows? I don't really know. I don't really care. I just make video about the thing I love. All right. If you enjoyed this video, like, I, I guess, I don't know, check out my other video, I made a video about Bloodborne, I don't know man, it was whatever, and also I edit YouTube videos for other YouTubers, if that's something that interests you or pick your interest, DM me on Twitter, link in the description and everything, alright, enough of the plug, I'm gonna play more, more fucking Elden Ring, because I'm fucking addicted to that game.